Hello, and welcome to the Business of Happiness podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Taryn McCarthy. And today we are joined by two incredible women I've been dying to get on this podcast. I'm so excited to introduce to you the Evolution of Mom podcast host, the terrific duo, Sharice and Amy. Welcome. Thank Hi, you. thank you for having us. Oh, we're so excited to have you here because I've been watching you guys from afar and kind of seeing you launch this podcast and do the mom thing all at once. And I've been dying to get you in here and just learn more about how you do it all and why you do it all. So <laughs> I'd love for you guys to please introduce yourselves to my audience so we can know a little bit more about you in case no one has yet checked out the incredible podcast, The Evolution of Mom. Go for it. <laughs> um, well, Amy and I, uh, we've been friends for the last little while. We met through um, our network marketing company. Um, so we already had like a business where we public sp we're public speakers and everything as well. And um, then we started like chatting about all these things that were like mom related and how like, you know, we can feel guilty about doing our business and um, feel guilty about taking our trips away and like even like shaming and stuff around mm. that from other moms for taking time and space to ourselves. But we're like, moms need to hear this. And so we started, <laughs> we were having like just drinks on couches and stuff. And we're like, people need to hear this kind of stuff because moms need permission, I think, um, to take care of themselves and to like go after their dreams. And yeah, so I think I'm, uh, we offer a different perspective, both of us, because Amy's a stay at home mom who homeschooled and I am a working mom. And so there's a lot of different um, dynamics in between the two of us. So, mm -hmm. and I think when we discovered how different our situations were, you know, being a single working mom, being a married stay at home mom who are both running businesses have both worked in healthcare. Sharice is still practicing and realizing that even though our situations were so different, the underlying feelings were still the same, yeah. right? That overwhelm, the loneliness, the negativity that comes along the guilt and all of that self-talk. And we really just wanted to start empowering women to understand that when you take those times for yourself, when you take time away, when you pour into yourself, it ripples out into those around you. And all of a sudden you're giving from a space of fulfillment as an individual, you've fulfilled your own cup. And then it pours out from that space instead of pouring out from a space of emptiness and it makes all the difference. So we still absolutely have our days of chaos and struggle and mom life and all of those things, but the mindset shift around it is what makes all the difference. Absolutely. So was there a time in your life where you didn't have this realization, Amy, where you thought, where you didn't understand that part of it, that giving to yourself was so critical in order to give to the people around you. Yeah, I would let myself get into overwhelm and burnout. Yeah. Absolutely. I would swing one way of, you know what, I just need to take some time for myself. I've never, I've always been okay with taking time away for myself, but the mindset around it was very, I need this and now I'm guilty, but I took it anyways, as opposed to the difference between the mindset shift now. So, I mean, Chris and I have always had a beautiful relationship in that he's spectacular. He's a great dad and he has no problem taking his children <laughs> for a weekend while I, you know, go and have some time and we give each other that time. It's, it's been so important, but the mindset around it, yeah, has been different because I would let myself get into overwhelm and then get burnt down and then do nothing. And then mm. so like, yeah. And then you'd have to build it back up <laughs> yeah, and then crash again. And then, so learning to dance in that happy medium of self-care and service and love is, it's been so valuable. It's yeah. like the reactivity instead of proactivity, yes. right? So it was very reactive in our life prior to, and now we're proactive with our self-care. So it's, this is us first taking care of us first so that we don't get to that space and it still happens. <laughs> I'm in it right now where I'm like, Ooh, my self-care has been like significant, significantly lacking, which then, you know, it has you kind of in autopilot, not being creative, not doing the things that you want to really do that fill you up. Right. Absolutely. So what 
does self-care look like to you, Sharice? Because one of the things I've noticed is that there's no one algorithm for self-care. You know, they try to sell it to us and some people even feel pressured about it. I had one of my, somebody I was interviewing said, oh my God, now I've got to make time for self-care. Like I don't, I don't have time. So what is, what does that mean to you in your life? Um, it, I mean, it's, it's, it looks different all the time. Um, it always changes with who I am and, and, um, what it is that like fills me up, but I was kind of introduced to it. And it's same thing. I was in that like space of overwhelm and pressure to try and figure it out because I had a counselor who asked me what fills Sharice up, what brings her joy. And besides making sure everybody around me was happy, I didn't know what that answer was. And so I, I totally avoided the question yeah. <laughs> and he was like, I'm like, I didn't really answer that. Did you? And <laughs> did I? And he's like, mm, no. So, <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't have an answer. So when I left that counseling appointment, I committed to just saying yes to some of the things that I wanted to do. Some of the things that I knew I enjoy say like, I love dancing. And so I took a couple dance classes just to see if I liked it. I don't like ter- choreography. <laughs> I learned that (laughs) either that or I'm just not good at it. So I tend to not like things that I'm not good at, but, um, I took some vocal lessons because I really enjoy singing and I thought, why not? Um, I just kind of explored those avenues of things that I really enjoyed, but I do know that I try as much as I can to start my day with self-care and it doesn't matter if it's just sitting there with like a quiet cup of coffee, but getting up about half an hour before my kids, they're, they have a rule that they're not allowed out of their room until 7 a.m. And so even if I get up at 6.30 and just enjoy that quiet cup of coffee and do nothing else, I start my day with that. Yeah, that's everything. Yeah. And and how about you, Amy? It's so interesting because you do have two perspectives. And I think that's what's so powerful about your podcast too, is that any listener can kind of connect with one or both of you, or even if it's not ringing true either of your stories, it gives us opportunity to know that there are so many stories out there. So what has been your journey with self-care and how has that looked in your life? I think it's very important to find self-care from a space of taking off all the hats that you wear, you know, take off your mom hat, your spouse hat, your business hat, everything, and get back to, like you said, being that individual, which we do tend to to lose as women who are in relationships, who are mothers, who are pouring themselves into business. It's, it's a lot. We take on all of these identities and then we lose the original one. Mm. And so getting back to, yeah, finding and discovering what brings you joy as an individual, what fills your cup as an individual is, is quite the journey. And so same thing. I have learned that starting my day proactively in that space. And I try and give myself as much time as possible. Sometimes the kids wake up extra early and, you know, you get disrupted and things, but it is so important to start your day from a proactive space. So I absolutely work on getting up before my children. If I have enough time, it's exercise mindset work, and then a hot cup of tea. Cause those things like exercise, especially like targeted ones, we go for hikes and things during the day, but like targeted ones for myself, I turned that off. So I don't know why that's happening. <laughs> it's, it, it's happening because it happens minute. to all of right. us. Right. And <laughs> you know, actually I love that chime that's happening in the background because this is the thing that happens with moms, especially moms who are trying to launch a podcast or run a business on the side, or it, we have so many things that are constantly pulling from us that I love your suggestions of really intentionally starting your day because that might be the only quiet time you have. And I think sometimes when we think, well, I'll make it happen, I'll make it happen, but we don't intentionally carve out the time for it. It just doesn't happen because there are so many other demands from us. Yeah. Yeah. And really learning to be present in the moments that are bringing you joy. That's another thing we really speak on is that's how you discover what you enjoy and what fills your cup is being present in the moments that really are filling you up and bringing you joy and making sure you're chasing after more of those and really embracing them when they are happening. Mm -hmm. So what do you do when you realize, all right, I haven't been taking care of myself. I haven't, I'm spinning out of control here and I'm not able to be present with my daughter or my son or my work or myself. What do you do? Is there a practice that you guys have to get back to yourself, to find yourself again? 
<laughs> it's funny. I'm laughing because like I, I was in that space and I was like, okay, I need like more pleasure, more play, more joy. Mm. And I was like, how do you play? Mm. <laughs> I didn't even, like, I actually Googled how to be more playful because I was like, I, I just don't know. Right. Like it, you lose and you lose that touch of play. And I know Amy and I have talked about that where like, Amy's like play feels forced. It feels like something that I'm trying really hard to do, but I don't enjoy at all. And I was kind of the same way where I just didn't know what play looked like for me. And so I, I mean, I just kept asking, you know, asking myself what that looks like, how, what do I need right now? Like, that's my big check-in is like, what does my body need right now? And whether it's, you know, to go for a walk down by the water or put my feet in the sand or something that just kind of brings me back in touch with me, but it's that check-in with the body and what it, what it, what it is that I need. Mm -hmm. Learning to ask yourself those questions throughout the day, Mm. right? Is this bringing me joy right now? How can I shift it so that it does? If it is, how can I do more of this? What do I need? That's a big one is what do I need right now? And your, your intuition and your subconscious, as soon as you start building that up, it'll answer. It really will. We talk about this a lot in our podcast about having conversations with yourself and like, I'll even just be like, Hey, what do I need right now? I feel lacking. And I'll be like, Oh, you need a glass of water. Like you need to hydrate. It's certain, like something, it's sometimes it's so simple like that. And then you build from there and it just expands, right? As it's like a muscle, the more you use it, the stronger it gets. Absolutely. Yeah. There's definitely strength in constantly trying and practicing it. And I totally agree with you because I found the same with myself after 40 years of not listening to myself, it's really hard to all of a sudden hear that voice that's telling you, you know, for 40 years, you've been telling yourself not to listen, not to pay attention. And the great analogy that I know so many women can, um, understand and recognize is, have you ever had that feeling when you get to the end of the day and you realize you are dying to pee and you've just been ignoring your body all day and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm going to burst. But how did you get to that place? You just ignored your body all day long. And we do, we get so good at it. Mm -hmm. We get so good at it. And it's funny because we tell ourselves that that's heroic to a certain extent. Is that what you found? Is that Have you noticed that with women that you've been interviewing, that there's this old story, that martyrdom story that feels like a heroine in their, in their story. And it really is just depleting them the whole time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, how many women and mothers do you have that are like, I just give and I give and I give, right. And they just feel so empty. And that space is like, they just have nothing left. And that's why I always say that it's important to have that self-care at the beginning of the day, because if you leave it to the end of the day, (laughs) you're not even going to realize that you have to go pee, right? Yeah. Yeah. And women are, that's what they do. They, they allow themselves to be okay with the most uncomfortable of situations that they don't even notice how uncomfortable they are. I mean, I've had days where I realize it's two o'clock in the afternoon and I haven't fed myself yet. Yeah. Right. There's lots of where you know, that's very normal. Same thing, not listening to your body's needs, not hydrating. And we, we have this, like, like you said, it's like this thriving, this is how I do it. I am so strong. I don't need to take care of myself because I can take care of others. And I think the narrative really needs to be shifted there. Women need to change what the standard is of feeling healthy and feeling okay as women and as mothers, because we, it's the bar is very low. Yeah. The bar is very low. What we, what we work through and drive through when we're feeling terrible yeah, and we're not feeling ourselves and we're feeling run down and then we get sick and then we still go. (laughs) Right. So it's very important that, that, that mindset shifts in how well we take care of ourselves because then we show up better. Yeah. And it's that mindset shift of when you're giving from a space of fulfillment and health and vibrancy, it's giving from a different space. Absolutely. It's so important. Mm-hmm. So now that you guys, you had this realization, you thought, I want to bring this message to other moms. I want to start this revolution of what it should be in terms of self-care and being a great mom and being an incredible woman. And then you started the podcast and you realized, oh, this is taking more of my time. <laughs> I've just launched into another whole arena. What have you learned in the process of 
getting the podcast up off the floor and getting this new message. I know you have so much passion and purpose behind it, but what else has this taught you about yourselves and about your tolerance for taking on even more? Well, I think honestly, this is a part of our self-care. It is. It lights us up to talk about this. It lights us up and fills our cup to help other people. We're both very service driven and very passionate about helping people with information. I mean, when we public speak, it's on health, it's on, you know, holistic living and things. And so when we were able to, well, I mean, the world shut down. Mm -hmm. So there was that, and we couldn't have that creative outlet. Mm -hmm. And we both missed service in that but that way we both miss speaking we both missed helping women especially in that way and so I mean selfishly this podcast is something that fills our cup absolutely mm -hmm. and it's something that we knew was needed for everyone else as well we felt so different in the mom world if that makes sense we were already taking time for ourselves and being very using air quotes here, selfish, when really it's very selfless to take care of yourself. And we were just like, you know what, this can't be a negative thing. It needs to be a positive thing. And women need to know that they are worthy and deserving of doing this for themselves too, instead of hating on people that are taking that time. Yeah. And so it just, yeah, needed to be said. Yeah. And I mean, thankfully, Chris <laughs> has been amazing because he's not only like he's been so supportive because he, he allows us this space, right? He's like, I got the boys and not only his boys, but he's got my boys too. Mm -hmm. And so it gives us a chance to like actually pour into other women and into ourselves as well. Right. So then, I mean, the women that we interview and stuff, we learn from every single time. So, and I think the personal growth that's come with it, cause we got mentors that helped us through it and stuff. Um, one thing that we really learned and realized is that nobody can tell us how to do it. And even though they're guiding us and, and, and they're successful and everything, we had to eventually take a step back because we were trying to be our mentors and not trying to do it like us. And so I think this gave us a lot more confidence in who we are authentically. And it's allowed us to be like, oh, wait, this isn't, this isn't us and this isn't our jam. Like we need to come back and, and present ourselves to the world. So give mm -hmm. me an example. What is something that you got from a mentor and then you realize, wait, this doesn't jive with me. I'm going to go with the whiteboard. <laughs> yes. So <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> that's a good one. So before, when we first got started, our episodes were laid out on this whiteboard we have in the corner here. And it was, these are our talking points. And it was very, you know, this, 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 but we found ourselves getting out of flow of conversation yeah. to make sure we were looking at the whiteboard and making sure we were on our talking points. And then when we discovered that we ignored the whiteboard and just talked and flowed, especially in conversations like this with other people, it it was better. Mm. And like you said, I think this whole experience has built up our confidence in the value we have just naturally. And with our own experiences and the growth that we have and do, and will continue to do it's yeah. So the whiteboard was not for us, <laughs> the very structured. <laughs> <laughs> well, and we were being coached by like masculine, like a very, very masculine men that were like, grind, 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 push, 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 do, 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 and proactivity and productivity. And we're like, that that's great. We love you, but <laughs> I know love them. Love you guys. They give us a huge different perspective, but we're like, we're moms and we can't always like, I mean, Amy stay at home and I am a single mom, right? Like they're there. We have to be real reactive. Like my son often gets sent home from school. And so my day as much as I can plan it out sometimes has to drop in this in like a hat in the minute and I have to like go and rearrange everything. Yeah. And I think it was like great the way that they do it. And I totally understand having structures and boundaries and borders, but it led to me feeling like a failure more often than feeling like a success. You know, you mentioned something in there and that is confidence. And how important do you think confidence is in number one, finding happiness and number two, finding success? Um, I mean, confidence is everything. And it is. a person in my life has brought that to me. He's like, it doesn't matter what values, um, what values you have regardless, like confidence is like the main point like that you do all the rest of the values mm -hmm. are like secondary to confidence. 
And so I think confidence gives us everything to chase after our dreams, to Mm -hmm. even know when we're struggling and we're down to kind of keep going. Right. And I think, um, one of the things that I've had at the end of the day is like, no matter what, given enough time, I will always bet on myself. Mm. So I know that given enough time, I will always succeed. Mm -hmm. And confidence gives you the courage to continue to fail forward. Mm. And we're big believers in that small, consistent action over time, failing forward as you need to, and learning from each failure. It's that's what builds confidence, right? You can't trip up and be like, well, I'm out done. That didn't work. No, like there's lessons and there's moments and those every time you fail forward, that's what builds your confidence and your courage and having courage and confidence in it. It helps you with your core values too. It helps you become who you are and Mm -hmm. it keeps you aligned with who you want to be, to -hmm. have courage and confidence in those boundaries. It helps you set boundaries. It's, it's everything. And you can absolutely fake it till you make it. You can, (laughs) you can say, this is who I want to be. This is where I want to go. And you just, you have that confidence in the belief in the dream and you just build on that. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I think that that's one of the things that women in general, now this is very stereotypical, but I think that's that, that's one of those things that we struggle with and that masculine types, men and women who have a very strong masculine side are so comfortable with confidence. You know, we call it egotistical. We give it names because we're not, we're not clear on what it is, but really that confidence is such a superpower. And so what do you say to women who say to you, look, I just don't feel confident. I've never been confident. That's not who I am. I'm not a confident person. What do you suggest in terms of first steps to find your confidence, even if it's just confidence as a mom, which is something we all question all the time. Am I even doing this right? Yeah. 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 So what do you say to women who come to you and say, look, I just don't have that confidence. How did you guys find confidence? I mean, I think it was a lot of missteps for it me. It does. But well, is. and that's what you said, missteps. Amy, a lot of str- yeah. making mistakes and being brave enough to do so. Yeah. 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 I think like the way that I look at it as is I had to make those mistakes to learn who I wasn't, to learn all the stuff that I like, I kind of challenge a lot of my social beliefs and my conditionings and all those kind of things as they show up our living beliefs. And even for us to have the courage, like we wanted so badly to uh, prove that we love our, our mentors. Right. And so we wanted to be yeah. what they expected us to be. And I think the more that we do fail and the more that we do have those mistakes, we are like, oh, wait, was this actually me? Like, is this actually who I am? Because for me, building confidence actually looked like stepping into the feminine and really owning who I was as a feminine. And that means sensuality and sexuality and flow and, you know, just that general abundance mindset rather than um, that like push and grind and succeed. And it took a lot for me to actually step back into that space because I actually had never really been in that space. I didn't even know what being feminine looked like because I was in such a trauma response and hiding in that masculine for most of my life. Mm -hmm. So I had to take those steps and it was just little by little, like it was putting on a nice dress when I wanted to wear it instead of waiting until I lost another five pounds to put on that dress, right? Mm -hmm. Or putting makeup on just for me, not because I was going on a date those kind of things, like slowly it was like, oh, wait, I do deserve this. I do, you know, um, yeah, I, this is what I'm worthy of. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those small, consistent actions and understanding that there really is no mistake. There is no failure. They're just lessons, Mm. right. Having the mindset around the fact that all of these things are happening for you instead of to you builds your confidence and knowing that you can handle anything that's thrown at you. It makes a huge difference. Again, just having the mindset shift around it. And that's what builds your confidence. And there's an aspect in there too, that you touched on Sharice of self-love, like forgiveness and compassion for yourself, which we give so easily to our children, so easily to the people around us, but something that's 
forgotten when it comes to ourselves. And that's what you were tapping into. Why shouldn't I put makeup on for myself, you know, yep. and listen to myself. And when something, when my intuition is telling me this feels antithetical to what my beliefs are or my values or my feminine side, then listening to that and being able to hear it only because you can have love for yourself. Yeah. And it, it seems like such a huge task. I think at the end of the day to have self-love, right. Mm -hmm. You're like, how do I love myself if I don't love all these mm -hmm. things? And I had all this trauma in my past and I kind of locked it away. And I was like, you know, you have to accept yourself hundred percent, but I don't even know what my traumas really are. Mm -hmm. And so allowing myself just to be okay in the moment and not judge myself for what feelings came up or what food I ate or whatever it is, right? Like just being like, you know, I'm allowed to be both sap happy and sad at the same time, sappy. Yeah, I like that. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I am, and happy. right? Like, but we so often ignore those bad feelings and hide and push them away. Mm. But part of self-love and self-acceptance is allowing them to be there and allowing them to have space because they, they do teach us, right? Pain at the end of the day is such a huge catalyst for growth. And if we're ignoring it and we're pushing it away, then we're not growing. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just like there are no, no bad things when it comes to the, when you look at it as lessons, there's no bad feelings mm -hmm. either. Right. We put them in these boxes of bad and good and, you know, traumatic and these things, and we box them away and we shove them aside. But in reality, those things weigh on us at the end of the day, those boxes get really heavy the more we ignore them. So we, I think just talked about this not too long ago in an, in an episode of opening those boxes mm -hmm. and sorting through what the lessons are, what serves you. And then you just have to let go mm -hmm. of the rest. You surrender. have to be able to let go. Yeah. You have yeah. to be able to let go and surrender of that because all of those things that weigh on you, they do, they take away from your confidence mm -hmm. because you're holding on to all these negative things and, and having all this negative space in your brain. And so those tiny moments that we talked about, about finding joy in your day, finding proactive time for yourself and things. Those are the little embers that turn into confident flames. They are the ones. So it's about those small, consistent, mindful moments that lead you to that space of confidence and courage. I love that image of those small embers of that burst into a flame. One day you turn around and you say, wow, I actually have some confidence. I actually have a little yeah. bit of self-confidence, a little bit of self-love, but you're right. There takes a certain amount of practice in it as well, especially when we've fallen out of practice, we've forgotten mm -hmm. how to do it. And I think we want to dive into things and light the fire right away and have, you know, but I think then the fire gets out of control and now you don't know what to do and your life is burning down around you, <laughs> <laughs> right? Like people who hear about our morning routine. I mean, we typically you know, get up an hour early and I like to work out and I like to do some mindset and gratitude work and then have a hot cup of tea. Well, people hear that and they're like, well, I'm going to do that starting Monday morning. I'm waking up an hour early. Well, three days of that and you're dead. Yeah. <laughs> you're exhausted. It's not, you want to start 15 minutes earlier than you used to waking yeah. up yeah. and you want to do that for at least a week yeah. and you want to build on that and, and create success right? You want to create success through small, consistent little things, as opposed to one big thing that got too challenging because your body's not used to it. And then you pull back mm -hmm. and it's like, well, this isn't for me or, oh, I can't do this, right? Small, consistent, positive changes, things that bring you joy, right? We always are drawn towards joy and love. And when we do things out of pain, it pushes us away. No matter how hard we try to go towards something from a space of pain or hatred or anything like that, it pushes you away. You can get a little bit, but you're not going to get as far as you want to. And it's not going to last. So you have to come at it from a space of joy and love and consistency. Absolutely. I can totally see that. And I can totally see that. So one of the things that I know many women struggle with or search for is this idea of work-life balance. And I think even as a stay-at-home mom, like there's this idea of work and of life, you know, the work of being a mom and a housemaker and setting up a life for the rest of your family. But what do you guys say in response to how do you find work-life balance? What is work-life balance? There is no balance. There's no balance. <laughs> you heard it here, ladies. Oh, throw that idea out of the yeah. window. There is harmony. There's harmony, but there's no balance. We're all searching out there for this balance and this perfectionism. It doesn't exist. Perfect doesn't exist. Mm. So I think the biggest thing that 
when you're searching for that balance is just being okay with that day and knowing that you did the best that you could in that given day and allowing yourself that grace. And some days that means, you know, I didn't get off the couch and I was like cuddled up in a blanket. That's okay. That's what was needed for that day and giving myself that grace to accept that as it is, but not staying the same, Mm -hmm. right? Being like, okay, that was today, but tomorrow we have these things Mm -hmm. and taking that aligned action. So it's not always about doing nothing, but it is about giving yourself grace that that is the day that that happened, right? Because we get so much in our heads and judge ourselves. Like we're judge, jury, and victim all the time. Yeah. All the time. And I think allowing that to kind of be out of the way and just being the observer and being like, oh yes, today was a tough day, Mm -hmm. but I did the best that I could today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because snuggling on a couch with a blanket is not on the whiteboard, Sharice. It's true. It's not on the whiteboard. It's yeah. not on the whiteboard. It's and it's not very productive. No. And, but I think you've, you've nailed it there. You said you have to align with compassion and grace yeah. for yourself and then move forward. Mm-hmm. Sorry to interrupt you, Amy. Go ahead. No, no. I, yeah. And, but being okay with it at the end of the day, not crapping on yourself for having that kind of day. You still have to come at it from a space of love and kindness and mm-hmm. grace because that was the day you needed. You have to come out of it, right? We, you know, can't live there. Can't live there. I'm, I'm a big fan of pity parties, but you can't have them for very long. And that's where the growth of yourself and the self-love and the courage and the confidence comes in because you pick yourself up faster. Mm. It's okay to fall and have those days, right? It's not our fault sometimes if we fall down, but it absolutely is our fault if we don't get back up and do things do differently. Right. And so, yeah, those days are needed sometimes and that's okay. And we have to give ourselves grace and love in those moments because then the next day is going to be better instead of tackling the next day from a space of, oh, yesterday I sucked and I hate myself and blah, blah. Like, no, you took a day. You needed it. You've rejuvenated. You've probably had some beautiful moments with your children cuddled on the couch, like find the beauty in it and go forward. What like how often, how many women out there? And I like, we have three of us in the room right now have sat there and been like, I ate a cheeseburger and French fries and feel like crap. And so the next day you're like, I'm going to work out of the gym and spend like three hours. And then you're sore the next day. And you're like, and you're starving. <laughs> you're, yeah. Cause you didn't eat anything but lettuce the next day. Like we punish ourselves, right? Mm-hmm. Like I've always said, I'm like, nobody can be as cruel to me as I am to me. Nope. Right. And I'm like, why do we do that to ourselves? Why? Mm -hmm. I'm like, instead of just enjoying the burger and being like, oh, this was like amazing and exactly what I needed right now. And then going, oh, my body feels like it needs movement. You know, Mm -hmm. (laughs) it's such a different mentality to go from instead of being like, oh, I hate myself. So I need to go work out now. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's no change there. There's no change in hate. Right. We can't hate ourselves healthy. It's not going to work you have to come at it from a space of love. And that's a, that's a shift. It's a, it's a challenging one, but it's about catching those little moments that you have. Oh, I'm a jerk. I ate a burger. Oh, I sat on the couch all day. You have to instantly be like, Oh wait, like we're going to delete what I just said. And we're going to switch it into something positive because we all still do that. We still do that, Mm -hmm. but it's, it's that catching moment. And that switch that's, that's what shows your growth. That's what shows when you can come out of those pity parties faster and, you know, get back on the wagon faster. You know, how many of us have said, well, you know what, Monday or next month, or, you know, I, especially as someone who is a recovering perfectionist and people pleaser, it was always, okay, well, I messed up this week. So this week's shot, this week's done Monday, or this whole month is shot now next month. Those things change and you get back on the wagon, air quotes again, faster when you're solid within yourself. You still fall, you still have those moments, but everything we've talked about today can be done from a space of love and confidence and and growth. You can still grow through all of this if you're solid within yourself, if you're serving yourself first, if you're giving yourself that self-care, that self-love and having those moments, it all comes together better. That's beautiful. And I love that quote that you just gave us, you can't hate yourself healthy. You can't do it. And I think so many of us end up in this spiral that keeps feeding on itself in terms of 
you know, hurting yourself, deprecating yourself of some enjoyment or punishing yourself and then hating yourself and then punishing yourself and then hating yourself and over and over and over again. What does it take to interrupt that cycle? What does it take to stop that continued beating yourself up and then abusing yourself and then beating yourself up and then abusing yourself? Awareness. Mm. It's Being it, aware of it. Yeah, it's that, like I said, that silent observer that even though my judge still talks a lot or my victim still talks a lot, um, having that observer in the background that's like, hmm, what is going on here? Like, mm. what is the underlying need that's trying to be met? What is that limiting belief that I keep telling myself that I'm not worthy to be healthy or I'm not worthy, you know, of joy? I'm not, you know, what is that in the background that this judge is like? Burp, 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 burp. Mm -hmm. You'll always find yourself in a space of what you think you're worth. Always when it comes down to it. And I love the thermostat setting example. You yourself have a thermostat setting. So say yours is at like, let's just use easy numbers. So you're at 20. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, sometimes you'll be able to raise your thermostat setting. You've been working out, you've been doing all of these things. You're up to a 25, but something will happen. If that inner work, if that mindset, if your worthiness is still set at a 20, mm -hmm. something will happen. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, we'll have downtime where we dip down to a 15. And we're, you know, not doing great. We will always find a way to come back up to that 20, but you have to be aware of that. This is your thermostat setting. This is your setting and you need to consciously bring it up. And that again, comes with that awareness, that small, consistent action and who you're spending time with <laughs> your thermostat setting is very driven by the five people you are most influenced by. And so if you all of a sudden start hanging out with people who do work out, who eat healthier, who you're going to be that fifth person that starts to become that way. So that's a big one. If you have goals for health or wealth or anything like that, even if it's just mindset and positivity, who is having influence over your life? You need to get into rooms that are are already at 25 that are sitting at 30. If you can get in a room with people who are at a 30, you'll come to a 25 higher than if you're not. So what if the five people you're surrounded by are your kids? What is your, what are resources for moms, especially stay at home moms, Amy, what do you suggest for stay at home moms who just find that they're around Cheerio eating, Netflix watching <laughs> little kids all the time. <laughs> yeah. How do we, how do we yeah, find people to help rise us up to a higher setting? Yeah. If your five people are your children, you got to branch out. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's important. I understand why these tiny humans are so important and are the main people in your life. Absolutely. As mothers, we understand that. But the beautiful thing about the world now is there is so much free resources for you. And when you maybe haven't found that solid community around you yet, which I do encourage you to create, go make friends and don't feel obligated to have these people be your number ones. If you decide that, you know what, I spent time, I went on a play date with this person. She's maybe not going to be a top influencer in my life. Maybe not, you know, you have to be able to discern from that and be okay with that. Be confident enough to say, you know what, this isn't going to be an all of the time friend for me. We don't align. Our values don't align. Our core values, our goals don't align. And that's okay. It's okay to literally level up your friends and level up the people that you want to spend time with, but free resources everywhere. Podcasts are huge, right? Podcasts are huge. And getting to talk to people on the internet is spectacular. And same thing, you can allow the internet to influence you in a negative way or you can allow it to be a very positive space for you. I don't know a woman podcaster who in this type of field that we're all podcasting in for mothers and for women who won't have a conversation with a woman who reaches out to them. True. In fact, that's what we're doing it for. And in we fact, you guys have bevies and BS too on Instagram. So not just we podcasting, do. but you guys do this awesome thing on Instagram. Tell us about that. <laughs> We go live every Thursday night, just like in a casual setting. Usually we're in mom buns and sweatpants um, with a glass of wine and just kind of unpack our week and, and what that looks like. And we do love the interaction with people when they can like share kind of and ask us questions as well. So it's, it's our less put together space mm -hmm. because we do want to show, you know, that even though we put out this perception of who we are, we've got it all together. 
sometimes we don't always have it all together. We know cool. those weeks are hard <laughs> and we're still, yeah, we don't have it all figured out. We don't have it all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we it struggle. <laughs> is. It's a very casual interactive space. And sometimes, you know, people can leave it anonymous. They can just private message us and be like, you know what? I really need this talked out. And that's what we'll have a, that's what we'll have a discussion on. So, you know, you can come on and interact with us live and let us know what you're going through. And we would love to support you in that space, or you can do it anonymously, just send us a message and we can talk it out without, you know, letting people know who it is and what exactly it is you're going through, or we can just private message back and forth. But yeah, that space is, is so valuable for people. And it's so important for you out there as mothers who maybe are feeling that loneliness because I, again, don't know a woman alive who's a mother that hasn't had that moment of loneliness on a regular basis, even when she's not alone, but there's that lonely feeling. It's important to have people you can reach out to who are, you know, in that space of mindset and growth and, you know, the area that you want to strive to be in. Well, I think it's just such an important thing that you do. I love that you guys offer that as well, because it is a safer space to just dip your toes in and find those other five people that you want to elevate yourself to. So, so cool. Thank you for doing that. My question is, in light of the bevies and BS, what are the struggles that each of you are facing right now? Like, what is your biggest challenge in your world at the moment? If you were to put your hair in a top knot and sweatpants <laughs> right now, what would what would you say is something you're really struggling with? Um, my biggest struggle currently is um, I, I just entered into a new relationship. And so it's the first time in a while that I've been in a relationship and really easy to cultivate that space for myself when I'm by myself. Yeah. And I was comfortable. I like I'm super comfortable with being alone. But now exploring this brand new relationship, I get caught up in those moments of, you know, saying yes, when I actually need space for myself. Um, So I'm now, it's about a month in that I'm recognizing there is that need to still have space for myself and not to fill it all with this other person, right? So um, it's, it's been brought to my awareness. So now I'm like, okay, it's now my duty or my responsibility to take that space for myself. And I know that he would have no problem with that, but yeah, it's definitely, it's been a challenge for me in that <laughs> regard. And so cool that you have that awareness now, like yeah. what a great way to enter and start a relationship as opposed to waking up 20 years later and realizing, oh, wait a minute, we got to change this whole algorithm. Yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. Cool. It's amazing. She, when this all started to become more serious, she's like, I need to start dating myself at the same time. <laughs> good for you. She started taking herself out on dates and just embracing this solo goddess while still we should totally do that partnership. And you can do it. We should all be doing. And even in relationships, right? Like how many women are been in a relationship for 25 years and don't know how to take space for themselves. It's one of the things that I am the most grateful for with being a single mom is I had to be okay with time on my own. And for the first couple of years, I filled it with people all the time because I just didn't want to be alone with me and all my thoughts and all my trauma and all my pain. And last year with COVID, like bless COVID for that. I um, I was like, I feel like this is exactly what the universe has given me to really understand myself and really get to know myself. And I started to take that space, right? The Thursday before my kids came back to my house was my date day where I would take myself out on a date. I would get dressed up. I would go to a restaurant and I would eat on my own, but just enjoy the food and eat whatever I wanted guilt-free. It didn't matter. Um, And then my first day when my kids go back to their dad's house as well is my day for myself. And I actually didn't book my, any patients those days. Like I would just take that day and pamper myself, whether it was like get my hair done or do a Reiki treatment or whatever. Mm. And because I had cultivated that space so beautifully, it made me realize like how quickly <laughs> I could get rid of that when I was in a relationship. And I think I had so many moms when I would go on these trips and stuff that would be like, oh, I wish I could do that. And I'm like, but you can. And realistically, I think that, it should be easier for you because you're in a relationship and you have a partner and that partner should know that like support you and say, but I, I don't even think women ask. Yeah. I don't think, I think they're so scared to even ask for that time because 
they don't know how to ask. And I, yeah. and it's the most important thing, most important thing. You've got to date yourself first. I love it. Amy, what are you struggling with most at this moment? Ooh, I am working through the struggle of allowing beauty and flow in a positive light, as opposed to feeling like it's chaotic and failing. So with Sharice diving into this beautiful feminine energy and me being like, what's that? <laughs> she like, when I was like, I Googled how to play. Yeah. She's like, what did it say? Tell yeah. me everything. <laughs> Right. Because the beauty of when you start doing amazing things for yourself, regardless of whether you're intending it to or not, it ripples out to those around you. Sharice, you're embracing this beautiful feminine flow and it's all of these things. I'm like, tell me everything, mm. everything. And so learning to, I mean, a lot of self-love has come through that that kind of space and learning about male and female energies and what that even means and how one is so analytical and you know, the whiteboard that's very masculine, right? <laughs> and learning that there's this space over here that I've never even explored and I've never allowed myself to even be in. Yeah. And when we go through any kind of traumas and my trauma is with chronic illness and, and a lot of health issues in my past, you, you separate from your body. Hmm. And we do that as women a lot to survive and be in this survival mode where we're up here too much. We have too many thoughts. How many of you as, as women can't shut this off? It's because we've come, become so disconnected from our bodies and our intuition and our, and our allowance of flow and beauty in that way. And so that's been my growth journey lately. And it has been spectacular, mm -hmm. but there are moments where it still comes up of like, is this, is this okay? Should I be like, mm -hmm. not okay with this? And should I be doing something? Where's my list? <laughs> right. But then yeah. the list makes me feel like such an asshat sometimes because I like feel like I'm failing. Yeah. That's it. Right. So that's it's right now I'm creating balance again, air quotes, because you have to have space for reactivity, especially as a mom, especially as a stay at home mom mm -hmm. with homeschooling and all of these things and a social life. And now we have a puppy, like everything can be very reactive. So you have to not come at it from a reactive space. You have to proactively be okay with the reactivity and if, allow grace and flow and still find joy in it anyways. So in this journey of trying to understand yourself better and learning more about yourself, what have you learned is your superpower? What is something that other people admire in you that just comes so naturally and effortlessly that's actually your own superpower? You want to say yours or I'll, I'll go? I know yours. You know mine. I know I'm yours. like, I'm still thinking about it. <laughs> you can go. <laughs> My superpower has developed over the last, I'm going to say four years of healing my body from my, you know, illness and, and all of the things I've gone through. It's very hormonal related and women just accept these hormones as normal. We're told that these are just natural female problems. You, you're a woman, this is your life. You have to deal with all of these sufferings and yet still thrive and survive and run everybody's life. And so a, a part of, I mean, a, a lot of how I feel now about self-care and, and self-confidence and all those things come from understanding that we need to change the narrative around women's health. And so that's what I public speak on and things. And my biggest goal is to teach women that just because it's common doesn't make it normal that they feel this way physically. And it's to help women with understanding their hormones. And so that's what a lot of my public speaking on is, is women's health and hormones. And that's a big superpower for me. I think wow. a lot of us would instinctively say, oh, my superpower is I'm a great mother. I'm a great spouse. And I do think I'm a great both of those things. But again, we need to come at it from a space of you as an individual. Yeah. What is your gift? We all have collective gifts as mothers, as spouses, as friends, even, and as entrepreneurs or business owners, or, you know, being an employee at an incredible company, we all have those, we all have gifts in those, but what's your individual superpower that fills your cup and helps you while helping others? That's like, everything. It's so valuable. And that's, again, something that gives you confidence and courage is knowing what your individual gift to the world is. Very cool. That's a great superpower. I love that Thank one. You. We need another whole ep episode to talk about that one. Yes. I love that. All right, Sharice, what's yours? Um, I would say curiosity of self. 
Um, I always question what is going on. I've, I've spent a life um, growing up and not feeling like anybody understood me, not really feeling like I was a part of anything because I knew I was different. And I spent majority of that time watching and observing people and trying to understand why they made choices the way that they did because I never really understood it. And I turned into chameleon for a lot of years because I was trying to fit in. And in the journey in the last four years has been a lot about not fitting in. It's about letting Mm -hmm. stuff go that is not part of my, um, about, uh, uh, not part of my authenticity. And so I've had to ask myself a lot of questions about like, is this mine? Mm. Is this other people's? Because when you're empathetic in nature, you tend to take on a lot of the people's stuff. And so really coming back to the heart of who I am and learning that journey and allowing it space to be here. And sometimes that means I swing really far to the right. Sometimes I swing really far to the left until I find my groove in the middle. But it's been really, really, um, yeah, I would say it's my superpower in the aspect that like I can always look at something that's coming from somebody else and go, that doesn't really resonate with me. Hmm. And now I'm learning how to identify what is mine and what isn't. And so- I, it creates a stronger confidence in myself, a stronger authenticity in what I want to bring to the world. Um, and I th- feel like I can truly 100% show up as me mm-hmm. in any given moment. And how does that now relate to your definition of happiness? Uh, well, you it, help others do the same. Giving people that, yeah, that space. But I think the more settled you are in yourself, the more um, content you are in those moments. And so you do show up happier. You do show up, like, things don't shake and rattle you as much as they, as they used to because you're confident in who you are. And so that space of contentment, that space of just that inner knowing and confidence in yourself that no matter what, you're gonna be okay. Um, leads to that happiness because it's not near as much of a struggle or pain or anything. So. Amy, what would you say your definition of happiness is? I think learning to find joy in everything, Hmm. right? Hard or good, good days and hard days. I think being happy is learning, right? Being like you said, in here, right? Everything has to come from in here first. If it's chaotic in here, your life's chaotic out here. It, there's like, they work together as a community. Your external environment and your internal environment are such a community. And I think we try and separate the two too much, but that inner happiness and inner balance and inner work is what creates that in your external world. So, I mean, coming back to joy in self and, you know, that's, I, like, I think that's your superpower part of everything you just said is helping others understand that joy and pleasure and play is that. And I think our superpowers together are obviously very aligned with helping women with their mindset and with their, so I think collectively how as different as they are, that's like a superpower on its own Mm. together, right? Because it's coming at mindset, mindset for women, self-care, self-love, do the things. (laughs) And how beautiful is that image of each of you owning your superpower and then bringing those things together, having the confidence and the compassion for yourself to be able to recognize those superpowers and then merging to an even bigger, greater superpower in terms of how much impact women can have on the world in that way. It's so beautiful and it's an absolute revolution not just an evolution, but a revolution in terms of how we see ourselves as as moms. Mm -hmm. And letting people know that it's okay that your mess is what it is right now, because eventually your mess becomes your message. Both like all of, both of us have been through such different, but meaningful traumas in our life. And that's why we're here. That's why we do what we do. And so it's hard when you're in the hard moments. It's hard when you're stuck in the mud and doing those things. But 
there is something out of it. There is growth and there is a message out of it that you can help others with. And sometimes you've been given that struggle for a reason so that you can help others. Well, thank you for taking that gauntlet, Sharice and Amy. Thank you so much for creating the Evolution of Mom podcast and for being brave and courageous every day and for sharing your journeys with us because it's such an important conversation to be sharing with other women out there. So thank you. Thank Thank you. you for having us. Yeah, this has been such a pleasure. And please look up these two incredible women. Thank you for joining us in this episode. You'll find all the resources in the show notes. And let me know what you think of this episode, because I thought this was fire. I think this is so much valuable information that so many of us can learn from. So thank you, both of you. And thank you to all of you for listening. Remember, today is always possible to be a great day. Bye-bye.